I'm Joss. Hi, I'm Claudia. And this is the Let's Get Down to Business podcast. We're two cousins on opposite ends of the globe with a lot of opinions about figure skating. And we're here to deliver the news, recaps, and cry about Sui Wenjing and Hang Tong along with 95% of the skating world. Hi everyone, welcome to our 2021 World Figure Skating Championships recap. We are going to be doing four different episodes, one for pairs, one for ladies, one for men, and one for dance. So it is going to be, it's already been a very eventful first half of And one for my psychiatrist session that I'll need after this. (laughs) I literally just sent a tweet like not five minutes ago that says, I'm going to call my psychiatrist. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so that seems to be about the theme. <laughs> Disclaimer, guys, I am sick right now, not with COVID. I promise you, just the common flu, huzzah. Um, and so I might sound really, wow, my voice is really, really deep. Huh, how fun. I might sound like really congested. I probably do. So that's probably why I sound like three octaves lower. So <laughs> bear with me. All right, let's 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 just get into this because like... <sighs> It's already been a day. It is 1.45 in the morning when I'm recording right now. And I was shopping for a new pair of shoes today and watching the ladies free skate on mall Wi-Fi. And if that sounds like a nightmare to you, it definitely was. <laughs> All right. Let's let's get let's into do pairs. It. <laughs> yes. The, the first uh, event that finished, but by no means the least chaotic um, to be fair, all of these all of these disciplines have been chaotic this week. <laughs> what a world championships, right? Especially worlds in the middle of a pepperoni, as they say on the TikTok, <laughs> <laughs> or any other random p oh, word. No, I want pizza. <laughs> no, I want pizza. Okay. Anyway, what were your overall impressions of the pairs? Oh my gosh! I mean, first of all, side by side jumps don't exist because. <laughs> They just no don't. one could do them. It's very unfortunate. Ugh. There was cursed ice. Cursed ice in Stockholm, Sweden. Maybe it's just cursed skates. Because like, okay, in the free skate, why did so many pair ladies flood their side-by-side combo jumps? Like, not their solo jumps, but the combo jumps, and which leaves so many points on the table. Do we all like decide uh, pre-free skate that we're not going to stuff up the solo jumps and stuff up the combo jumps? It was like... It was weird. (laughs) Yeah, in my notes, I literally have in like all these boxes, so many points were left on the table. (laughs) All of them. So much on the table. If you did like um, control F on my notes, like in the pairs section, side by side, like SBS is probably going to like top everything in terms of count. 25 hits in the dock. (laughs) Uh, Probably even more. But... This pair's worlds was, uh, I don't think, what anybody fully expected. Um, but it's the first pair's goal for Russia slash FSR in eight years, which is like wild. I didn't, I didn't realize it was that long. It was since uh, 2013 where Tatiana Velocizar and Maxim Trankov won. So yeah, that's that's so weird. But anyway. Facts are facts. Another fact is that if Sui and Han won this world, then they would have been 3 P champs and have a hat trick. But Sadly, they did not. Cue tears. The first heartbreak <laughs> of many at this world championships. On my Very couch. much so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we kick off with our main discussion, I actually, I want to talk about Zoe Jones. Oh my gosh, can we please? Because she is literally like a yes. superhero. She's like Elastigirl. Oh my god. Dude, Incredibles program, please, on, let's do it. I'd be let's so keen. <laughs> let's get with it. Instead of like Incredibles being for like eight-year-old synchro peeps, let's have it for this 41-year-old awesome superhero mom with three kids. And her and her partner only trained for 21 days in the lead up to Worlds. Like, So they represent Great Britain and Britain's been hit uh, quite hard with a lot of rink closures due to COVID and whatnot but like far out three weeks mad respect to them and they just came out because they love what they do and they just decided to skate like just you know oh three weeks okay let's fly to world championships 
All I've done in the past three weeks is finish three bags of sour candy and actually have graduated to Warheads. <laughs> My husband got me a bag oh, of Warheads. Today. Congratulations. <laughs> and I had one in order to uh, wake myself up to record this episode. <laughs> That's all I've done for three weeks is just indulge in sour candy. So thank you, Zoe, for showing me what I truly should be doing with my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Warheads are the greatest though. But what's also sick is their short program to Somewhere Over the Rainbow, their costumes had like actual like rainbows on them. And like, okay, they were really kitsch, not to everyone's taste, right? But I was just like, mad respect. It's my taste. Like, I approve. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, obviously, we do have to talk about uh, their technique. It wasn't quite there. Again, they had basically three weeks to train um, starting. But like, who cares? Okay, right. No, I didn't I care. Did uh, this was the first of the times where I had written down that someone went down on a side by side jump. Um, Zoe fell on the side by side double axles. Um, there was a hand down on the throw triple flip. All that being said, a lot of errors, but very enjoyable. Okay, so Zoe retired from competitive skating, single skating in 2001. Um, A lot of ladies in the ladies competition hadn't yet been born, but she came back in 2014. And just because she loves the sport, like that's wild. Absolute mad respect for her. I want to be her when I grow up. Not going to lie. Also like... Some of these ladies hadn't been born in 2001. Like, that makes me feel real old. <laughs> Just saying. I know, right? I mean, I was born at the end of the 90s, kind of like in the last five years of them, which a lot of people like to say it's not real 90s. But still, like anything over 2000, I'm like, mm, weird. <laughs> Coming from an early 90s, baby. The early 90s really do slap, if I do say so myself. <laughs> the- <laughs> True. I will agree with that. Okay, let's move on to some quick shout outs. Uh, let's start with shouting out Riku Miura and Ryuchi Kahara. Oh gosh, I feel like for me, these two were like one of the highlights of the event. And I mean, both surprisingly so and not surprisingly so. But first of all, like, how cute are they? <laughs> they are so adorable. And they're such good partners with each other. And like, oh. They made Hallelujah, performed by Katie Lang, bearable. Oh, also one of the probably, I mean, one of the two significant times that I will be talking about Hallelujah. The other one is coming tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Three guesses who. Apparently, um, they had a tricky warm up before the short program, but they had a decent enough um, short program that they were pretty like happy with. But yeah, they came in 10th overall. Their free skate was not as great as their short program, but nevertheless, they were they were enjoyable to watch. They've got some nice qualities about yeah, them. Yeah, there were just small errors here and there. For example, in the free skate, uh, she doubled the first toe loop. Again, other small errors. She looked so sad, though, at the end. And it was just like literally heartbreaking how sad she looked because like they just They have that X factor. And a lot of times, like during this pair's free skate, there were a lot of men wearing black top, black bottom, and they were skating to like this morose pop ballad with strings where the words are like slightly indiscernible. Oh, tell (laughs) me about it. I was like, I need something to break (laughs) with this monotony. Like it's just too much. And they were that. And I just think that they have so much. And it was so sad to see her so sad after their skate. Yeah, but they're so adorable. I really, really like them. Like, his smile. Why are you so cute? It's such a cute smile. You should make TikToks. You know those those people on TikTok that are just, like, there to uplift you? Like, angry reactions. He should have, like, happy reactions. Oh, my. I love angry reactions. I love that. Yeah, he should. Let's <laughs> let's vouch for that. Absolutely. Go fund me to start happy reactions for uh, K- Mr. Kihara. <laughs> <laughs> Let's also move on to quickly shouting out eighth place finishes Nicole Della Monica and Matteo Guarisi. Yes, the king and queen of the unitards. Y'all. <laughs> the yeah. unitards. So um, <laughs> in their short program, there were a couple of mistakes that were actually pretty costly. Mm, yeah, Nicole doubled the side-by-side triple salco, so it was called a double salco. She went down on the throw triple loop, but, you know, we had the double unitards. We had this weird costume moment at the end where they pulled a flappy bit of, 
uh, unitard fabric over their faces. Um, More I masks no idea. than some of our Russian friends were wearing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so confused, man. Like, let it be. Where? Mm. But I, I appreciate that the Let It Be version that they used was from Across the Universe soundtrack because that soundtrack is, like, absolutely lit. Um, and in the free program, we had double unitards again. Um, Nicole turned into uh, a unitard Ariel. And I guess that makes Matteo Prince Eric. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with it. Sure. They went with the the theme of the night, really, which was the kind of slow indie music with slightly indiscernible lyrics and some strings <laughs> yeah yeah there we go with some strings um but it it wasn't like a super great skate from them but it was definitely better than their short program uh but it just looks like they're having fun out there so like i guess that's all that matters. yeah in the short program their errors really set them back uh they scored 59.95 yeah. in the short program which put them in 11th after the short so really and the judges were just like, no, no, no 60. 60 for you, <laughs> folks. Yeah, that really set them back uh, in the short program. And you could tell that they were disappointed with how they skated. And then, then in the free skate, I feel like everything was just a little bit out of sync in the first half. You yeah. know, it felt a little bit stiff. They weren't quite in sync. But I think that they really got it together in the second half. And you can tell that there was like a look of relief on their faces after yeah. uh, they finished yeah. skating. So... A lot of that's been happening this week at Well, just like in dance, turning around the corner for the fin step. And I, I can't remember who it was exactly, but um, I'll, I'll make sure I know in our <laughs> dance episode. You can just see coming around the corner, the whole going, "All right, I guess we're doing yeah. this." And then, then we're done. <laughs> and then we're okay. And then you, you can tell just kind of like with every, with every element, they're like, "Okay, yeah, okay, okay." <laughs> and I guess with that, let's move on to sixth place finishes. Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinaro. Okay, so after their short program, this is definitely another team that was pretty disappointed after the short program. Um, yeah. They ended up mm-hmm. in 10th place after the short with uh, 63.45. It was not their greatest outing. Uh, they had errors on their throw triple loop. They had an error side by yeah, side. Yeah, the side by side. <laughs> toes. Again, another control F side by side, right? Um Michael was, like, bobbling all over the place in, like, spins and, like, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, the biggest thing for me, though, was KMT, the shoulder strap, gave me anxiety because they skated right after Peng and Jin, who had an unfortunate costume malfunction. And then Kirsten comes out with, like, this single strap on her shoulder, like, nude-colored strap, and I'm just like, please don't snap, please don't snap, please Very don't snap. Very anxiety-provoking. Very much so. I think just in the short program, in general, everything looked like it took 1.5 times the amount of effort that it normally takes them. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and like this is not how they normally look. Like I feel like this is definitely like an anomaly. Um, But just kind of with the little errors and the spins and obviously the side by side jump, it really kind of set them back. They, like I said, they did end up 10th. Um, however, in the free skate, they looked significantly more pleased with themselves. They actually ended up fifth in the free skate uh, with 131.84. So that's a lot of improvement for them. You can definitely tell that they were relieved after that. Yeah, a much better performance from them. And like it boosted them up into sixth overall. So well done. They were probably one of the only pairs that did great side by side or landed side-by-side jumps in the free. Um, they did a triple sound, double toe, double toe. I was holding my bre- breath through literally every pair of side-by-side <laughs> jumps. And I was just like, I wonder why I feel so Because tired. we weren't breathing. It happens. Yeah. It, to me skating, I just forget to breathe. Like during spins, I'm like, I wonder why I'm so tired. And then I'm like, Claudia, because you didn't breathe the <laughs> entire time. Idiot. However, I did notice that their costumes did not seem like they go together at all. Um, this is what I said. So it's kind of like they took Truceva. Oh, Lord. I'm not ready to talk about her yet. But it's it's like they took her mint green <laughs> oh costume God. with the little fuchsia, like the flowers and the bedazzle. And it's like Cam T took the mint green and Michael took the fuchsia. But they don't just they just don't quite seem to work <laughs> together in the free skate. My my comment was lovely color to KMT's dress, but it looks like she got slashed by a tiger yeah, hybrid. They're very interesting. I, I don't know how I feel about these costumes. 
neither. Also, something that was questionable was the last um, lasso lift. Oof, Michael was muscling that lift hard. Like, oh my God. You know how like when gymnasts, they're on the bars and like you can see them like shaking to push up. That was Michael with KMT. And I'm like, oh Lord, this, he was in pain. Yeah. And yeah, kind of like I said for the short program, it just looked like everything took like one and a half times more effort than it usually takes. And like, this is not how they usually are. Like they just seemed kind of a little more sluggish than how they usually perform. Well, I mean, Michael did slip like on the final pose on his knees. He couldn't, I mean, it's a mood as well, so, like, I don't blame him. (laughs) Big mood. All in all, I am just really glad that they were able to perform better in the free skate than they did in the short program. They looked, again, super disappointed after the short. That's not how they usually are, but they did look significantly more relieved after the free skate, so. Yeah, good job to them. All right, now I think it's time for the U.S. pairs. This is a journey. This is a journey. (laughs) dude that is the perfect word to describe it what a journey let's start with our um holy spirit pair shall we let's start with Alexa Kinnear and Brandon Uh, Fraser if if you're wondering what that is referring to (laughs) in was it it was either the U.S. now yeah it was either the U.S. Nationals episode or the Skate America episode and there was literally like half the rink between them (laughs) during everything that they were doing and maybe that's just a comfort thing I don't know maybe that's just how they were oriented during that particular skate but nevertheless it did look like they came a little bit closer together skated a little bit closer together Mm -hmm. however not the greatest outing for them which is really surprising considering that at U.S. Nationals I feel like maybe that was like their peak this season they skated so well at U.S. Nationals like I was like whoa this is amazing and yeah, and I think, like, given this weird-ass season, um, not peaking at the quote-unquote right time, the right time being Worlds, especially for such a new makes pair, sense. it's fine. It's it's not an Olympic year. It makes sense. You know, we can see improvements. Even if some technical stuff didn't go as planned, we can definitely see improvements, especially, like, in their pair combo spin. It's closer together now, more in sync. So I was really impressed with that. Yeah, but it wasn't too shabby of a performance. I think the marks were hurt a little bit by the fact that they weren't seeded well. So they started really early in the short program. But I mean, their score held up um, through a bunch of the other pairs. So overall, an, an okay, an okay short yeah, program. Yeah, uh, Brandon did double again, the side-by-side jump. <laughs> did anyone have a successful side-by-side jump? Who knows? Definitely not as solid of an outing as U.S. Nationals. Like I said, U.S. Nationals, I think, was amazing for them. And then in the free skate here, also a ton of mistakes, especially from Alexa, which is so surprising. Brandon was so solid in the free skate. And you could Mm -hmm. tell that, like, he was really working. Like, he was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to do this. And uh, I I I thought that it was very – just, like – how they interacted he seemed like very comforting like it was very nice but alexa stepped out of the opening side by side triple toe combo i'm assuming it was supposed to be a triple toe double toe brandon did a single toe um at the end but judging by alexa's reaction she it was kind of like a shock to her that she didn't land the combo um properly and you could tell that she was like oh damn and rushed to catch up um Two foot landing on the throw triple loop. A mistake from Alexa again on the side by side triple sow. Uh, but you know, great lifts from them. Fantastic throw triple flip. Uh, it was. It just wasn't Alexa's day. And you know, I don't know. Tell me if you agree with me. But I think even seventh at Worlds, it's fine. It's. I think it's a strong debut at Worlds for them. Obviously, you know, they could have skated a lot better, but we have seen countless times this season how good they can be. And knowing that, especially in their first year and in this weird Worlds, given the lack of competitions this season, I think the amount that they competed kind of shoved them in the spotlight um, in the best way possible. And yeah, it just wasn't Alexa's day, unfortunately, but it was really good to see not her owning up to it. Like that's, that's the wrong way to put it. I hope you guys like get what I mean by that. But it was so great to see Brandon being so supportive of her in the Instagram comments. So I think they've like, this is just a one-off for them, hopefully at least. 
I mean, to me, it seems like a one-off for them because Alexa just has like this fire to her where like, you know that she is going to go home and just like drill everything. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that just this partnership with Brandon and how they performed at nationals, like she is not going to let this go. <laughs> like, Oh, for sure. Just knowing her personality, not that I know her personally, right? But just like knowing oh, her Oh, she shows it enough that I feel like it's safe to say, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that she's going to go home and drill every single thing. She's not going to let this slide which is like it's it's that's just going to be better for them in the in the long run right especially leading into the olympic season so i think so and and the other competitions like we were saying the season have been so solid for them definitely a one-off thing and they're gonna go home and work on it for sure exactly Mm -hmm. let's go to our second u.s pair and that is of course ashley and tim Oy vey, this this was a roller coaster. <laughs> oh, this was a lot. I am honestly so sad because, okay, let me take you through my emotional journey. Okay, so first of all, Ashley and Tim did end up ninth overall. They placed sixth in the short program, and I was like, oh my gosh, sixth. Like, this is going to be amazing. But then in the free skate, they just didn't quite do it, and they did end up ninth in the free skate. It wasn't awful, but it also wasn't good enough if that makes sense (laughs) no it's like this was kind of like their opportunity to like really shine because it's not like everyone else was perfect right so exactly yeah if they were like really really on point they could have done it and I think that this was their opportunity because last year was Jessica and Brian Mm -hmm. Jessica Cowling and Brian Johnson's like opportunity to go to Worlds and really shine because they had their peak at Nationals. They had, like, their Nationals moment, and then they just didn't get to go. And then this year, they dropped out for some unknown reason, right? And then Ashley and Tim got to go, and I was like, oh, my gosh, they're going to do it. Like, this is going to be their moment. But then they just didn't quite pull through in the free skate, and I ended yeah. up a very sad American. <laughs> I'm not American. I'm Canadian, but a Canadian living in the U.S. I ended up a very sad Canadian living in the U.S. who likes Ashley and Tim. Who who wouldn't? Because, like, their collective glute power is insane. Yes. It's too insane to, like, not like them, right? Um, but I think they really showed what they can do in the short program. And, you know, it was great. But, yeah, I mean. All right, let's start with the short program, though. To never tear us apart, Bishop Briggs. We love this program. Good triple twist to open. Ashley went down on the side-by-side triple sow, though. It was called under. Um, but big throw triple Lutz. She managed to keep her hands off the ice. And what I love about this program though, is the really difficult entry into the pair combo spin. And they managed to stay pretty well in sync during their tough positions. I love their uniqueness. And like Mark Hanready, who was commentating on, I don't think it was just the ISU broadcast, but probably a lot of others um, said for their free skate, there's a demonstration of their mutual flexibility in the change edge spiral in the choreo sequence. And I'm like, yes, their mutual flexibility and just awesomeness is, I guess, what sets them apart because they're not the traditional um, and stereotypical pairs team you normally see. But they did score 64.9 in the short program and although the free skate started off pretty well it just it didn't keep going that way no she so she doubled the cell in the free skate and then of course missed the combo as everyone was doing (laughs) the lifts all seemed really labored there was not smooth entries and exits into like pretty much every lift in this free skate I just I love them and I love how they're packaged. I love, you know, the contrast of their short program to their free skate, especially the season, Mm -hmm. the costumes. I love everything that they present. They just can't seem to quite get it together when they need to. And I'm mad about it. (laughs) You know what? I'm like, I get the disappointment because they are like a lot of people like them and for good reason. Like we love them too. Um, But I feel like we, it's the same almost with Alexa and Brandon in the sense that, you know, I think Ashley and Tim got the opportunity to showcase what they can do. And even if, you know, the free skate wasn't that great, they showed up in the short program and the judges have seen at Worlds what they can do. So it's one more time that this, they skate in front of these judges' eyes, even though uh, I think the judges should go to neutral optometrists to get their eyes checked. <laughs> Everyone needs a new optometrist appointment. Yeah, but you know, as a perception-based sport, hmm, the more time they spend in front of the judges, I mean, good or bad, I guess, because the judges also watch practices as well, it's it's better for them, right? Let's hope that, you know, 
the judges take something positive away from this, especially the short program, because they can definitely hold their own. And I think that Jessica and Brian, they really have some competition to look out for. I agree. And with that being said, let's move to our, (laughs) this one really breaks my heart, our uh, fifth place finishers, Peng and Jin from China. Oh, man. Oh, man. This was just Murphy's Law for them, especially in the short program. And like, even if you're not a fan of them, everything that could go wrong went wrong and you just can't help but feel sorry for them. Oh, this was a real heartbreaker. As a whole, it wasn't like, awful but it was also awful if you know what I mean yeah and so they had a really good outing at Cup of China which (laughs) we did it's honestly one of our favorite episodes my favorite episodes that we did just because it was like so chill that we just got to like exactly laugh and talk about random shit uh but this was just I wish they had that performance here I mean obviously we'd say that about everyone right but like yeah exactly oh this is not how we're supposed to go guys not how we're supposed to go so it started out with a freak fall right at the start and I think that just her weight got thrown off balance and like what hurt more I think was you could see the disappointment on her face when she fell her face scrunched up and it wasn't because of pain or anything it's I think it's just like mostly shock and just like Shit, what the hell just happened? She's and then, sad. Be- I think it was because of the, um, that freak fall, the zip in Cheng's dress broke and it split. And I was just like, ask for a reskate. But then again, I also get it because I once skated through a costume malfunction too. I had my hairpiece get stuck to my costume and so like my neck was glued to my shoulder. So I was like, crap, what do I do? And I'm like, all right, I guess I'll do a combo spin. Um, (laughs) So sometimes you're just like, it's easier not to go to the ref, which is like stupid because go to the ref, but also like, I get you. It was just so unfortunate. I was like, it was just like thing after thing, you know, that and it wasn't like, I mean, obviously there were mistakes, right? Uh, She put her hand down on the side by side triple toe. There were other mistakes as well, but it was just all these very, very unfortunate deductions that they got. Yeah, and they did have a lovely throw triple loop. I, they could do that in their sleep and still get, you know, plus three, four, fives. Um, but I think big kudos to them for keeping it together when so many things went wrong. She skated, you know, with that broken zip. And I don't think a lot of people noticed if not for the commentator yeah. pointing it out. It, well, at least, like, if you didn't notice, you know, she didn't pull so much attention to it. Um, like, I'm sure they were panicking on the inside because at least I would be. But I think that's just a testament to how um, how great competitors they are. That's really bad English, Claudia. But anyway, what was so cute was him at the end saying to her, hey, don't worry about it. Like, may shuba. And I was like, oh, oh sweet. I really like him. <laughs> Me too. And they did get a chance to redeem themselves in the free. But only if you describe side by side jumps. They don't exist, remember? Side by they side don't. jumps don't exist. They well. don't. Really, in this case, like, they don't exist because Peng doubled the side by side triple sow and then she went down on the triple toe combo. Oh, again. And then, like, everything else was, like, fine. Dropping the combo again. Like, my notes say for everyone, left a lot of points on the table. The table is very full at this point. It could use some reinforcement. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So many points on there from everyone. Uh, But all their throw jumps were great, both the triple loop and the triple sal. Um, Great triple twist. All the pairs elements were great. Yeah, pairs elements were great. Again, with everyone, just the side-by-side elements. But uh, I really love this program. I love the music. I love the costumes. It just didn't work out. I'm just very sad about these two. How interesting. I know a lot of people like the Cloud Atlas program, and I don't dislike it. Let me say that first. But... I find it's hard to connect with them, like, especially when, you know, their compatriots are Sui and Han, but like to Peng especially, um, or maybe it's like, I don't find that the choreography matches the music properly. Like the music is great. Um, and same with the short, but I'm still left like half bored or like m- maybe not bored, but just like not fully fulfilled. Does that make sense? Like, I feel like they could give so much more because they've got such great elements, right? But it, they're just like right 
under X Factor level. I think she's like very in her head, maybe, especially this competition, you know, with all the stuff that happened in the short program. Like, I feel like she was very, very in her head after, especially both those side by side jumps in the free skate, too. It's just like you could tell that she was thinking she was thinking. Yeah. But I think that like when we will get to talking about the top uh, three pairs, but I think if you compare with them, they all are really aware that they need to almost like overperform. It's like in the theater where they tell you to overperform because to the audience, it's going to look normal, even though in your own head, you're like, ah, oh my God, I'm overperforming. But yeah, it's just, I mean, it's so weird for me to say this, like connect more with the audience when there was like literally barely any audience apart from the skaters in the stands. (laughs) But with everyone watching on TV now, I want to like reach through the camera and have the performance like grab me, not Physically, though. Although don't, because it's a pepperoni, so. (laughs) (laughs) Why do you keep saying pepperoni? Now I'm hungry. I'm sorry. I had pizza, too. It had pepperoni and salami, so. (laughs) Oh, yum. Were they hot? Were they chilly? Were they what? (laughs) Were they chilly? Like, were they hot in terms of, like, food hotness? Not temperature hot, as in, like, chilly. Yes. Yes. I was like, wait, how can something be hot and chilly? Yes, yes. I understand. Oh, right. Now I catch up. Sorry. That was my bad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's actually quite funny lost in translation we were today over charcuterie <laughs> but yeah i mean fifth i think that's it was the correct placement but i mean i feel like they could have also if they skated a little bit better and didn't you know have everything go wrong against them um in the short program the gap between them and tarasa and morozov would have been a lot smaller and so we would have gotten a lot more drama it's not like we needed any more but like no, we're, we're good on that front. Thank you. <laughs> we are satiated. And with that, let's move on to Tarasova and Morozov. I think they just... I was excited for them because they had such a good momentum going leading into Worlds. And I thought, you know, we'd get to see them clean and at their best. But alas, that did not happen. <laughs> yes, here we are. And at like like at Russian Nationals... As we all know, the pairs competition in Russia is steep. The The margin between these top three, Tvasova and Morozov, uh, Boykova and Kozlovsky, and our winners, Machine and Galiamov, is very, very small. They all have had competitions because they've all had plenty of opportunity to get competitive ice under their feet this season. Uh, they've all had times where one of them just inches in front of the other. And here they just ended up being the pair that did not quite inch in front of the other two here. Al- although two made mistakes, which we'll obviously talk about in a bit. Yeah, we'll get to. You know what? I don't mind their Bolero short program. I think it's actually quite well choreographed with like really nice transitions. I think it suits their kind of serious, classic, gorgeous quality very very classic it's just side by side jumps they don't exist right no don't exist don't talk about them (laughs) yeah don't talk about them um and that's what really what um kept them out of the top three in the short program what really surprised me like i don't know why i didn't pick up on this earlier but the speed with which vladimir got genya up in the final lift that was insane i was like dude, what just happened? Like, why is she suddenly six feet in the air? I was like, damn, you're strong. And I'm like, well, okay, this is why they're actually like really, really good. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, they did lose levels here and there and left points on the table, which is disappointing for them. Um, But uh, they did not come back with a free skate that they were hoping for. No, they did not. I felt like something was off in the sh- in the Bolero. I feel like they were skating always slightly above the beat. And that's like what my dance teacher mm-hmm. always used yeah. to tell me not to do is skate or not skate, <laughs> dance on top of the music. <laughs> you know, you always want to extend until the last possible second because like that's what keeps the audience like waiting for more mm-hmm. is just yeah. like that lengthening of the moment. Right. And not to dance on top of the music. So I felt like they were skating on top of the music. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and the cl- the clearest indicator of that was that they finished quite ahead of the music and just, it was awkward. It was awkward. Theme of my life. I understand, guys. Yeah. So it definitely was a whole thing about Bolero skated them rather than the other way around, which definitely with this music, you'd want it uh, to skate to Bolero and not the other way around. So let's move on to their free skate. It just wasn't, 
it was a fine performance, but there were a lot of like teeny mistakes that will cost them. And it did. And I found my note was that this skate was a big mood of like, it was either too much or too little. The throw triple loop was huge, but it was like too much. Like she went so high and then had to put hands down. However, they still got positive GOEs basically across the board, except for one judge. I was like, all right, guys, cool. I mean, I think with these freaking GOE points, there's actually like, if you look at the rules, it's just so not how the points should be done. So like, (laughs) what rules? We're looking at the, I think we're the only people out of all the judges and the two of us looking at the rules. (laughs) Exactly. Twitter knows the rules. It's just, I I can talk about like, uh, hashtag ISU needs reforms all day and like sit on the fence to people's annoyment. But yeah, like, Jenya flubbed the side by side triple toe combo. It was just, there was a big lean in the air, and the air position just got loose and it got away from her. But it was a skate littered with mistakes, but they still ended up 12 points ahead of Peng and Jin. <laughs> like, okay. 12 points, man. Like, a lot of points, man. <laughs> yes, their PCS deserves to be higher, but okay. <laughs> this is a whole conversation, like, that just describes the entirety of worlds. Like, placement can be correct. But the gap in points is severely not correct. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll obviously, we'll talk about that more when we talk about ladies. Let's not uh, and men tire and ourselves dance. out now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've got it all. All right. Um, so I think Tarasa and Morozov wanted more from the skate and the event. And so did we. Because I think we're just waiting for them to really hit it out of the park. Because, like, we know what's in them. But all right. We'll wait until we're 84, I guess. <laughs> Let's move to our friends, uh, Alexandra Boykova and Dmitry Kozlovsky, who had a short program to uh, merry go round of life from Howl's Moving Castle soundtrack. Very pleasant. Yeah. Love it. Very, very, very pleasant. Um, they did end up in third. This was like the epitome of a roller coaster. If you thought Ashley and Tim um, at Worlds was a roller coaster, <laughs> you did not watch Boyka and Kozlovsky. <laughs> Um, <laughs> let's start with their short program. They did change it. This is a new short program. Uh, they previously were skating to the captivating star of happiness, which ironically Moscovina said that they changed it because that program had a, like tragic connotations. If that is not the theme of this judging panel, <laughs> tragic connotations. <laughs> Very true. And they didn't choose House Moving Castle, actually. Like, Sasha went on Instagram and saw a fan edit with the music, and she was like, hey, this is actually, like, pretty cool. I mean, I love the choice. They kept the same costumes. It worked for House Moving Castle, but at the same time, this is just, like, putting the same choreography, costumes, and whatever to new music. And, like, we can all see that. It was a nice skate. It was fine. It was good. They deserved first place. That's kind of all I have to say about it. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Uh, she was ecstatic at the end. And and I think that it was, it, like you said, it was a well-deserved first place. It did make them, because I love the music, it just kind of like dampened the music a little bit. Mm-hmm, because like exactly. we know that this is an old program, to not an old program, but like their original program to new music. So I was like, oh, I like it. But also like I've seen this before to different music and it kind of makes me a little bit sad for Howl's Moving Castle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But like you said, Sasha was really, really excited at the end, primarily, I think, because that throw triple flip has been plaguing her quite a bit this season. And Oh, that is so true. Yeah, you can see at the start of the short program, she was really paying attention to getting that hip checked out on the landing. And it worked, so kudos to her for that because, you know, it was a good program. They scored 80.16, and although I agree with the placement, um, (laughs) PCS... I felt like the gap should be tighter between them and second place, which was Sui and Han in the short program. But I'm going to say that quite a lot over the week. <laughs> yeah, their PCS was 36.72. And Sui and Han's PCS was 37.09. So not the gap I was uh, expecting. We'll get to Sui and Han later. But OK, let's this free skate. Oh, the sad, sad free skate. OK, Sasha. Boykova was very upset about this. The girls just did not have a good day in the free skate. All of the girls. So yes, side by side, triple toe combos, she fell, which was a shock because normally Boykova and Kozlowski are well known for having really solid solo elements. 
And then throw triple flip. She flipped out of it big time. And like I mentioned before, she's been having trouble with checking out of the triple flip on time. But I think what caused this program to not be so successful for them is probably burnout. That's my theory anyway. You can see them, especially Dima, really tiring after the halfway point. Um, Mark Hanretti um, on commentary said that their components will definitely be affected by their mistakes, as well as the fact that they were losing speed and flow in the elements at the end, for example, the lifts. So, you know, it was noticeable, definitely noticeable. They did end up fourth in the free skate, but I think it was what happened after they were done skating that kind of caused a lot of drama. So obviously Sasha Boykova, very upset with herself. It's nothing new to see her very kind of self-critical. We've seen it throughout the Russian competitions where the smallest mistake and she looks so, 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 so devastated. When she got the marks, they skated last because free skate skating order was reverse of short program placements. They skated last and so they knew they did not win when the scores came up and she turned to Muscovina, who was sitting on an ice cube. I don't know how far away, like maybe 1.5 meters, COVID regulations, right? And she said, well, you have world champions now. Oh, man. <laughs> you can see that she is so pissed. And I think everyone knows that she's pissed at herself because she was the one who made the costly mistakes. But it comes off as pouty, bratty, unbecoming, um, and like really not good sportsmanship at all. At the same time, I get it, but also you're essentially an adult. She's 19. Maybe save it for when the cameras aren't on you. I mean, Channel One, Russia's stream or broadcast of the event actually cut um, her saying, well, you have world champions now to Muscovina. They cut it out of the broadcast. But um, (laughs) I mean, it's on every other broadcast. But after saying that to Muscovina, she continued this sulky behavior. She went to her other coach and almost like ripped the accreditation from his neck, chucked Dima his, and stormed out of the kiss and cry. And I think it's clear that, you know, it's all anger at herself and not anyone else. Um, And I think that Muscovina will know that too, but still, it's... It's not the type of behavior we want or expect to see from athletes of this level and profile. Uh, And I mean, there's only so much you can say about, oh, she's young and stuff. But yeah, interesting. Interesting indeed. But the moral of the story is not the performance they were looking for in the free skate, especially after such a great short program. Again, points, so many points left on the table by not tacking on that jump after the triple toe, after she fell. They also know that one mistake and that could be severely costly. So they also know that. um, With the caliber of especially the way that these top teams were performing and also just in Russia between the top three Paris teams. It's just so close. One mistake and it could really cost you so much. So let's just hope that Sasha Boykova uses all this... um, energy and emotion and channels it in to her training like uh like we know that alexa kinero will definitely alexa do Kinnear. get some alexa <laughs> <laughs> all right uh let's Is move it on to our our good friends and faves oh my Sway God, I and love Han. Them so much. i love them so so much like oh so much love i think everyone does they, they're skaters skaters you know what i mean um every Everyone loves them. In in the free skate, everyone in the audience was just audibly whooping at the step sequence, and rightfully so, because it's, like, freaking amazing. But imagine this with an audience. Like, imagine how hype the audience would be. Hella hype. Wild. But they weren't at their best. They know that themselves. They're not at 100%. Yeah, they've been recovering from injuries. This year has just generally – they weren't at Cup of China – um, because we're still in that recovery process, this year in general has been just kind of like a comeback slash yeah. recovery year for them, which totally understand. But still, they're just so yeah. good. They're so polished. Their skating skills are just so on point. Amazing. They're like the Yuzuru of pairs at this stage. The quality, you ju- it just oozes from them in like absolute bounds. Yes, they have been plagued with injuries their whole career, really. And... They, I mean, they did say they've only been training for eight weeks. Eight weeks. I know. Eight weeks. <laughs> eight um, weeks, man. 
and, and they can pull this shit off and everyone knows it they just come out of the blue and just like hey guys <laughs> What's up? We've only been training for eight weeks. Yeah. What's up? What's up? Um, What's up? And I think that, you know, obviously they would have wanted to win gold. But at the end of the day, I think they're happy, not with silver, but happy with how they skated given their con- current condition. If that makes sense. I think all of us were just super happy to have the wenching sass back on our screens and the hairography and just this beautiful, beautiful skating. Yeah, so I was looking at people's warm-up notes, like on Twitter and on Instagram and stuff, and it sounded like people across the board, like throughout everyone's warm-up notes, they were saying that she was really struggling with these cursed side-by-side jumps in the warm-up especially. They were like, we're really worried whether she's going to land it in competition. We don't want her to injure herself because apparently the falls that she was taking in warm-up were actually like pretty bad. And they were like, I hope she doesn't like hurt herself. So a lot of people were actually relieved that it went as well as it did, even though like the jumps were not perfect. The landings were not perfect. Like she stepped out of a couple of them and we'll get to that in a second. But But hey, she stayed on her feet. Yeah, she stayed on her feet. People were very relieved. I'll take that Um, as a win. (laughs) And they haven't had that much time on the ice in general. So yeah, I do think that the PCS should have been higher, as we know. (laughs) <laughs> but I do have to point out that there was a significant amount of relief that she was not injured and stayed on her feet during all the side-by-side jumps because of how the warm-ups went. For sure, yeah. People definitely noted Hi Dylan Moskovich at that skating show on CBC Sports. He did say that, you know, I, actually I think this was Eric Radford who said that the energy levels seemed like at a 70% or like 80%. And like, fair enough. We know that they can be even better than, you know, what they showed. I mean, they were still great. And I would probably agree that they weren't, you know, 10 out of 10 in terms of energy. And that probably impacted their scores. But I still think they should have deserved more. Anyway, um, everyone just loves them. Especially when Han in the press conference just decides to pull an absolute doozy and just be the sweetest human alive. Um, He said that, um, okay, I'm going to quote this. And I like died of cuteness afterwards. He said... In the free skate press conference, I think everyone knows that I'm not the tallest pair skater, but I can do different things. Actually, I just want to improve the awareness of pairs in figure skating, get more and more people learning pairs. Even though they aren't tall, they can also do it and, you know, be the different one. I hope that can be a success in the future. Oh my gosh. And I just thought that was like the cutest thing. I was just, and he was just I like, them. even if you aren't tall, you can do it. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> From my 5'2 self. Much thanks. Yeah, I think a lot of people talk about Sway between the two of them, which I mean rightfully so. She is literally a goddess. But a lot of people just miss it. Like, he's just such a good partner. He's so good. Right? Like, oh my gosh. So amazing. So let's, we have to stop talking about them sometimes. Yes, that is true. I'll pick this. (laughs) (laughs) I'll, I'll pick now. Why don't we talk about our gold medalists? Actually, surprise gold medalists to a lot of people, but really not surprising considering that they've had a great season. They've made very, very few mistakes across the board this season. And that is, of course, Mishina and Galiamov, uh, Russian, or I guess figure skaters of Russia or whatever. Whatever. (laughs) FSR. Um, They have an Esmeralda short program, which I do really, really enjoy. I do Me love too. Esmeralda. Me too. And I think a lot of people do. Um, the attention that they pay to the choreography and keeping it very, I guess, true to the ballet version of it, I think just makes everyone really, really happy. They are the quintessential definition in this case of underdogs. They, they always fly under the radar, but their consistency is what got them to the gold medals. Um, yeah, Esmeralda, They had a clean, short program, bar the very out of sync uh, pair combo spin. That wasn't great. But everything else, they're probably not the only pair, but of the top pairs, they're the only ones who successfully did side-by-side jumps in both programs. Oh my gosh, congratulations, guys. (laughs) Good job. (laughs) And this is why they won the gold medal. They didn't sit at that table with all the points on it. (laughs) No seats at the table for you. (laughs) Yeah, they sat on the gold medal podium step instead. (laughs) They, they sat over there instead. They were like, 
<laughs> yes, and enjoy your meal. We're gonna be okay. I actually thought that they deserved um, more in the short program, but I guess they didn't need it because they're free skate to Bohemian Rhapsody and We Are the Champions by Queen really sealed the deal for them. Really awkward song choice, by the way, if you are not the champion. So I'm glad that they were because in past, we actually said this in one of our other episodes that like they didn't win and we were like, oh, awkward song choice because you weren't the champions. But here they were finally. So happy. Yeah. The thing is, right? Early iterations of this program didn't have the words we are, um, we are the champions oh, yeah. in it. That's and then right. Muscovina was just like, yeah, let's just put it in. <laughs> like, Muscovina. Oh, wait, pause. I need a so KMT tweeted something about Moskvina and I was just like, I can't love this woman. Was anymore. it the thing about the mask? Yes. So okay. KMT tweeted, Tamara asked me to bring her a rhinestone mask next time I see her. She requested red and silver Swarovskis. Later, she reneged and decided instead she would like a rhinestone pantsuit so that she can look, quote, 60 years old and not 80. Crying laughing emoji. And I was like, <laughs> this is the best story to come out of Worlds in its entirety. I was like... <laughs> Oh my god. If a rhinestone pantsuit is the key to looking 20 years younger, it would make me look like I'm in third grade, so. <laughs> Tomorrow Moscovina knows where the fountain of youth is, just saying. The fountain of youth. I need it. Need it tomorrow. Bring it to me. Okay, let's get back to it. Sorry, I detoured. Um, it wasn't a perfect program, especially like towards the end, you could see them tiring. You could definitely see like in the middle of the program, they were just like, okay, this is my breather moment. Yeah. <laughs> but this program is packed with so much difficulty, the transitions, the elements, that final lift, Sasha in a spread eagle. Oh my gosh, so I was just like, difficult. <laughs> oh, and like pairs have done this before and I'm always mind blown every single time that they do it. The ending transitional lift was so hard and yeah, it wasn't perfect. There were, you could see legs shaking and like all that, but it was clean. No other pairs in the top flight did it. And that's what won them the gold medal and fair enough. Like I wanted so much for Sweeney Han to win. But I think that they did deserve it at this competition. I agree. They went like pretty much clean and, and no one else really did that. Although I do think they they deserved, say, so Machina and Galliamov deserved more points in the short program. But I do think Sui and Han deserved more points in the free skate, especially with their PCS. Yeah. However, I think maybe between the two, they did skate clean. So I'm not mad about them winning gold, even though... My heart belongs to Sway and Han. Again, placements agree with points and point gaps, not so much. Points questionable. But points also, questionable. like, I'm so happy for Machina because she can just shove it in oh, her no, ex partner's no. face. Don't bring it back. This I is hate the it. story, right? <clears throat> this is the it's so, I hate it. It's so bad. And like, this is like her revenge moment, and it's great. So, four years ago, Nas just split with her former partner who unexpectedly said that he would look for an quote like easier partner to work with and so at the time this is what she said about it she goes we didn't agree with each other's character and in general Vlad needs a girl smaller than me because I'm a little heavy for him he would like to see his partner eight to nine kilos less I think I'm unlikely to be able to lose so much weight my weight is around 46 kilos oh gosh um so this was four years ago she was 15 uh I mean she won the silver medal at Junior Worlds with this partner. And like, uh, no. First of all, never, ever say that to anyone, but especially never say that to a 15-year-old girl. If you've ever said that to a 15-year-old girl, I will reach through my microphone and rearrange your face. And a pairs girl. Like, it's so well known that in pairs, like, there's so much pressure on the girls to be, like, so, so, so tiny. So it's easier for the guys to work with. Okay, first of all, <clears throat> um, but, I mean, now look at who, look who's laughing. She's world champion. Vlad, you can shove it. Definitely shove it. And excuse me, but Alexander Galliamov can handle her very, very well. Um, so maybe the problem was with you. Just saying. <laughs> Definitely the problem was with him. Just saying. Also, like, Sasha Galliamov is so much better because, like, he can do that knee slide. Yeah, we love a knee slide. So very, very happy for them because they had the skates that got them the gold medal and it was deserved given how the competition went. So kudos to them and an extra kudos to Machina because, like, there isn't any revenge better than success, right? Is that what they say? 
At least that's what they say. Sometimes I do prefer revenge. <laughs> Anyways, did it. That's enough of my therapy session. Uh, <laughs> congratulations to Machina and Kalyamov. Congratulations to all of our podium winners. Um, a little bit of a surprise, but not an unwelcome one, if I do say so. Definitely myself. not. All right, let's wrap this pairs episode up because men are about to start, and Jesus I'm going to go live. Men are tweet. literally about to start. Actually, it's already started according to the time schedule <laughs> on Peacock. Peacock screamed at me ten minutes ago that men started i'm like i'm not ready folks please give me time to recover (laughs) let's quickly wrap this up get the kiss and cry and our book recommendation out all right let's get to it welcome to our kiss and cry we are going to start with our book recommendation and oh my gosh this book is amazing so our book choice this episode was inspired by of course the comeback of sway and han faves of course. Uh, This book is also entitled The Comeback by E.L. Shen, and it just came out earlier this year in January. It is a middle grade novel that takes place in Lake Placid, and it is about Maxine, our main character, who is a 12-year-old competitive figure skater. Her parents worry that this is way too much pressure on her, but she is determined to succeed. However, at school, she starts to experience bullying because of her Chinese heritage, and there is also a new girl, Holly, who is a skater at her rank, who is amazing and super competitive at Maxine's level. So in our last episode, um, our world's preview episode, we recommended in our Kiss and Cry the book Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Hong. If you guys didn't listen to that episode... Please do, but also please read Minor Feelings. Um, It's a nonfiction memoir slash essay collection surrounding the Asian American experience. Um, And this book, The Comeback, although it's written from the perspective of a younger narrator, it totally draws attention to how racism is ingrained very early on. Um, And the experiences that Maxine has totally mirror experience that I personally had when I was her age. And I wish that there were more books like this back then that just made my experience more validated. Yeah, of course, the fact that the entire book centers around skating doesn't hurt either. (laughs) It's amazing. I highly recommend it. It's a really quick read. Um, If you're just like looking for something to read like on a Saturday or Sunday before you go back to work, 10 out of 10. Um, Again, this book is called The Comeback by E.L. Shen. Such a great book. I will definitely probably read it again uh, while I'm trying to wind down from Worlds. But yeah. All right, this is our Pairs recap episode for Worlds. Get ready because we've got three more episodes coming up. (laughs) Oh my gosh, I'm not ready. Okay, I, like I said at the beginning of the episode, I endured the ladies free skate over mall (laughs) Wi-Fi when I was trying to buy a pair of bougie ass shoes. Okay, (laughs) I'm upset about this. I also bought mom jeans, by the way, which are highly comfortable. And I, but mom jeans are so great. (laughs) I love mom jeans. I highly recommend them. Uh, if you guys have not been to American Eagle lately, I'm a very petite person. Um, so they have a new extra short length. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but <laughs> they have an extra short length and they also have an extra long length. So if you are tall or very short, you will find a pair of jeans that actually fits the length of your leg in American Eagle now. So, And I also love Aries just campaign and their whole mantra oh, yes. much appreciated so all right okay that's enough that's enough for me <laughs> and my legs <laughs> i'm claudia and come chat with us at let's get down pod that's l-u-t-z get down pod on twitter and instagram and if you want to work with us shoot us an email at let's get down pod at gmail.com if you like this podcast and agree that side by side jumps don't exist anyways please leave us a review and give us some five-star love we would really appreciate it thank you all so much for listening bye bye guys Bye.